California, <laughs> as if to say that, in California, Monday Meditation. So before we start, let's ask for divine blessing, shall we? To the divine supreme God, divine Father, divine Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tsukok Sui, Mahago Jumailing, we humbly invoke for divine light, divine love, divine guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith, so be it. All right, I hope all of you had a great weekend. Um, yeah, one of the things that uh, we did, of course, a lot of you joined us, was the sub-healing meditation that was yesterday, uh, 11 a.m. California time. By the way, that is still up, and the ones who have not registered, it's completely free. You can, you know, just register and then take you to this site, and you can watch it and practice it. And a lot of you who gave us feedback said you have a lot of crap come out. Okay, and that's the thing about this. And it just let me just spend a few minutes on this one. One of the things that people don't realize is we have a tendency to stack positive and negative emotions, okay? You guys know that already. They're in layers. And what people don't realize is this layering or this stacking that we're talking about are actually different types of energies inside the aura in our chakras. So when you go to a counselor, you go to a friend, you emotionally tell them, you know, you emotionally release, basically, right? Or you go to confession if you're Catholic. Basically, you're releasing a lot of this and you're taking, you know, slicing layers off them. Which is great because, you know, as <laughs> if you watch the movie Shrek, I'm better out than in, right? Okay. The thing is, it's too slow, at least for me. You know, who wants to go through years and years of processing, right? So if you do what you're doing already in trying to get rid of this stuff and use the energetic approach and understand every thought, every emotion is made of pure energy, it makes a huge difference because you look at it objectively now, not subjectively. What does that mean? You know, the act of thinking of something, feeling something, attach you to it. Make sense? So if I say, oh, I don't want to be angry anymore, well, guess what? My emotions, my thoughts, my focus is on anger. And so the more you don't want it, the more you attach to it. Energy follows where you put your attention to. For example, rub your hands together. Put your hand like this. Okay. This is just to kind of feel energy. I know I'm rushing this because I want to get into the meditation, but a lot of you have some feedback I want to get to real fast. Okay, so you go like this. Uh, you should see, feel something. Okay, put your hand like this. All right. Ready? Feel about the same, right? Okay. Now, on Instagram, this is reverse. <laughs> so, I apologize. So, doesn't matter. Pick one of your hands. Um, feel about the same. Now, go like this with one hand. Say anger. Again, anger, 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 anger. Go like this. Say happiness, 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 happiness. All right, you put the objective to it, right? You just said it. Go like this. Most of you notice it feels different because it's a different frequency. Now, follow me. Disin say disintegrate, disintegrate, disintegrate. Okay, go like that. Feels the same. So every thought, every emotion you have is simply energy, okay? Now, the part on what you focus on, you become, is because even if you're not wanting something, the fact that you put your attention to it puts energy into it, okay? So if I go like this, okay, go like this, follow me. Again, Instagram is going to be reversed, huh? Repeat after me. I do not want to think of my left hand. I don't want to think of my left hand. I really do not want to think of my left hand. I don't want to think of my left hand. In other words, you don't want to think of your left hand, right? If you go like this, which one has feel more sensation of feeling? Your left hand. Okay. You get my point? So more, more often people are actually making their lives worse by putting their attention on what they don't want. I know, I know most of you know this already. Energy follows thought. You know, every slogan, every whatever, you, you got this memorized. The question is, are you doing it? Are you applying it? So when you say, oh, I don't want to be pissed off, I don't want to you know, be angry at that jerk every time I see him, guess what you're doing? <laughs> you're feeding that energy, which is another layer in your aura and your chakras. Make sense? So the first thing you need to do, and this regardless, we join any of our programs, and I've been, I've been sharing with this with you, because this is one of the most valuable lessons I learned from my teacher is two things. One, every thought, every emotion is made of this energy, prana, chi, life force, okay? It's a certain frequency of energy. Number two, the fact that you produce these thoughts and emotions and thoughts, you can uncreate it 
dismantle it and create what else that you want. But in order to do that, you have to know first who is the creator. Without that, you're like a boat <laughs> thrown in the ocean with no rudder, no direction, no GPS, no motor. Make sense? That's exactly what, why people have chaos in their life. You know, people have misery because they just react to what's going on. They don't know who the I is. And you guys say, I've heard that before. The question is, are you practicing it? <laughs> the fact that your life is all over the place means the I is l losing control. Okay, all of us have been there. And the reason I keep repeating this over and over again for the longest time is because people keep saying, I want to be a spiritual person. I want to focus on spirituality, but I can't help it. You know, people around me are negative, blah, 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 whatever. And that's because you lost your identity. And when I was with my teacher, Grandmaster Tawakoksi, that was one of the things he kept pounding into my head. Who is in control of your life? So I am, really? Well, how come you can get this done? How come you go into this pain? How come this? Oh, I can't help it, but he did it, she did it. Everything is external because we forgot who the I in the identity, our identity is. Make sense? So one of, one of the effects of meditation, and again, there are many types of meditation, is first and foremost, remembering who the I. Because once you know who the I is, then you go, I created these feelings, I created these thoughts. So if I don't know what I created, I can uncreate it, dismantle it, create what I want. If you just get that principle down and really live it, your entire universe will change. Because you get to realize that you are the center of your circumference. Like you're standing there, this circumference, I'm in the middle of it. I choose to create what I want around it. And whatever else people do to me, circumstances, uh, economy, whatever else is going on, I create the world that I want in response to it, not just reacting to what comes in. That is true empowerment. Okay? Now, you, you go, yeah, but you know, you're using it so much. Well, what happened to love and kindness? Loving kindness comes after you know who you are and you choose to practice loving kindness. Loving kindness is not like, oh, it's okay. I'll just say everything's fine and let me, everything's near lovey dovey. And then that simply means what? You lost control. Well, you're a control freak. I wouldn't say control freak, but you want to know who is the operator. You want to know who is the mover of the body, creator of the feelings, creator of the thoughts. From there, you respond to the world. Does that make sense? So when we do our meditation, you always notice that we do a lot of cleansing. The purpose of cleansing is to wash everything out, all these thoughts and emotions, so at least there's some moments of clarity. Then you can retreat and know who the I is. And then from there, you generate the energy you want. You generate happiness, joy, prosperity, and so on and so on. So that becomes what's inside your energy field. In other words, it populates your thoughts, your emotions. And now what you're doing is, with meditation, you're peeling off what you don't want, and you're layering the thoughts and emotion you want. Make sense? So the ones who still want to do it, again, doesn't cost you anything, that uh, emotional healing session, I'll put it up here for the ones who have not joined it. Okay, you just register. You know, some of you say, well, why don't you put it on Facebook and Instagram and have it available for everyone? The main reason, if you want to know, is because not everyone's ready for it. You know, even when I'm sharing this with you, oh, yeah, you know, you have to control your thoughts, emotion. Some people get pissed off, believe it or not. In other words, they're trying to convince me to let them have a, their miserable life. I'm going, so why bother watching? Why bother learning if you're stuck with, in your ways? Make sense? If you want to change your life, you have to change what you're doing. I mean, all of you heard that. You've been to Tor Robbins, you have to, all these different teachers, they're doing the same thing. So if I put it on Instagram, Facebook, and everything else, you're going to have people who complain, oh, yeah, but you know, you're too forceful, and you know, I have my stuff, you have no idea what I've been through. So why should I waste my time? trying to answer these people who are so convinced their life will not change, where I can put all my attention on people who really want to make a change, make a difference, so that they become a pillar that people can lean on. Make sense? 
So that's why. And because I know I saw a lot of comments, oh, put it there so everybody can benefit. Well, if you register, <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything. Maybe some ounces of energy to move, move your fingers. You can play it, you practice it. It's an hour and a half. The first part is the explanation to give you context. Why context? Because if you just mindlessly do it, it will work. But nothing compared to, I'm doing this, I'm pulling out all this negative energy, throwing it in a violet fire, because it is to remove that layer. I'm affirming that I'm the soul, I'm a being of pure energy and light, so that so much energy can come in, these negative thoughts, negative energies don't have anything to t attach to. In other words, when you understand the context, and then you do it, you do it with more conviction. When you do it with more conviction, the positive energy you generate is many, many times stronger than the weaker ones. Make sense? So you remember, you remember a lot of times we talk about this in the past. This is one of the lessons my teacher taught me. Big fish eat small fish. Our positive thoughts will eat up and dissolve the smaller negative thoughts. Make sense? If they're big enough. Now, the opposite is also true. If you make an affirmation today, oh, yeah, I want to be happy, I want to be prosperous. Okay, I affirm it. That's great. So you did it for maybe mm, 30 seconds with full conviction. So let's say if you have somebody who could see energy or feel it, it's a, it's a, a cloud of energy like this. Oh, it's good. But for the last 30 years, you've been complaining, woe is me, you know, how come this, how come that? So that ginormous <laughs> storm cloud compared to this itty bitty cute little thing. <laughs> Get the idea? That's why we keep telling people, your New Year's resolution is worthless if you don't clean house from the year before and the years before. That's why every January, again, we'll do this again this year, is on first day of January, before we energize our positive thoughts, projects, and everything, we do a lot of scrubbing, clean house. And a lot of you know this, it makes sense. You start buying stuff, putting in your home, you're gonna get crowded, you have to first get rid of the junk. <laughs> you notice I'm using everyday English? <laughs> Because some of you, you know, you're looking for really advanced spiritual words and this and that. Go find another teacher. I don't talk that way. You know why? What for? You know, make it simple, succinct, everyday language so everyone can use it. They don't want to sit there, yeah, man, that's cosmic. That's profound. That's nice. I can't do it. It's not doing anything to my life. <laughs> you mean so far? So when we do our meditation, a big part of it is cleaning house, cleaning house, cleaning house. After we do the cleaning house, there's clarity, then we affirm who we are. We are the soul, we are the spiritual self. I move my body, I create the feelings that I want, I create the thoughts that I want. Then from there, you observe. How is my body responding to the environment? How are my emotions and thoughts responding to the people around me and to the circumstances and the news I, I, I watch? From there, the longer Listen to this, the longer you can keep that awareness, the stronger that control stays with you. And when that happens, there's a certain side effect. You start to observe when certain thoughts and emotions are not yours. I'll give you an example. Many years ago, my teacher came to our house. And uh, I remember Grandma said, talk to me, sat on our, on our sofa, I sat next to him, and we start talking and talking. I don't know where he stopped. I mean, literally, he just stopped. He goes, do you worry a lot? I said, Master, I don't. Why? Because I don't worry. But the minute I went, came into your house, I start noticing, here are the main words, I start noticing worry thoughts and emotions. I know they're not mine. I go, well, I don't, but she does. <laughs> you know, she's good at details. I'm not good at details. I'm just focused on what's in the future. I charge like a bulldozer, and then she handles all the details. Of course, when you are good at details, there's a tendency to make sure everything is in order, all the, all the you know, what do you call that in, in English? Cross the T's, dot the I's. With me, it's like, what's important is the objective. She thinks about the details, so there's a tendency to worry. I, I didn't tell him that. He goes, oh, very interesting. So I think you better disintegrate a lot of these things in your house because um, the minute I walk in, I notice it. Now, I heard that and I go, isn't that amazing? Imagine you go anywhere, you start to notice, hey, these thoughts are not mine. 
or when you're talking to someone and somebody's telling you, yeah, you know, you do this, you do this, you vote for this, you vote for that, you you this and that, and you sit there, you go, yeah, man, yeah, and they go, wait, 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 these are not my thoughts. Let me choose which one I allow to come into my system and which one I want to keep. Imagine having that awareness to do that every single day. Would that change your life? That is what you call pragmatic spirituality. Not spirituality of just spacing out all day long. What's going on? Oh, it's because the planets are not aligned. You know, you're just giving cockamamie excuses for not understanding what's going on in life and controlling your life. Am I making sense to any of you? I know a lot of you are getting uncomfortable, which is good. Because if you're, if you're too comfortable, guess what happens? You won't change. And that's what happened to me. I was like, you know, my idea of spirituality is like chanting, oh my God, what's going on in my life? <laughs> and the message just sat me down and goes, okay, what's going on in your life? How are your finances? How are your, how are your relationships? How's your health? And I said, why are you interested in that stuff? I'm just interested. Am I supposed to just do spiritual work to spread your teachings? You cannot spread the teachings properly if your life is a mess. Uh, okay. <laughs> Get the idea? Spirituality has to penetrate into your life. By the way, the word spirit, a lot of you have heard me say this before. You can do your search on the prophet Google. <laughs> Spirituality comes from the word spirit. Spirit actually means breath. I think it's Latin or some language. Breath. And the many ways to look at it, the way I was taught and the way I interpret it is the soul, the spiritual self, breathes. And when the soul exhales into the body, the body has life. When the, when the soul inhales and sucks its energy out of the body, the body is dead. That's why in Latin, in Italian, they call uh, the soul at, uh, eh, eh, anima, the word animate. So the spiritual self animates the body. When the animating factor pulls out, the body dies. Now, here's the critical part. When the anima or the soul's breath is in the body, the body is able to absorb prana, like fuel, like petrol, gas. And they use that energy to be able to perform things. That's where the word prana or life's breath, as they call it in India, comes in. So the two work together. The spiritual breath of the soul keeps the body alive. And then in order to keep living and maintaining itself on all levels, it needs to suck prana from the environment, use it as fuel to keep going. When that life's breath, okay, is not being absorbed by the body too much, that means there's a block somewhere. That's one. Or number two, when it's time for the spiritual self, the soul to pull out, to inhale, when that anima starts pulling itself out, then the body starts to weakening. Make sense? So one of the lessons I wanna, that I've learned that I, I want to share with you is twofold. Longevity is how long the spiritual self is in the body. But you don't just want longevity because there are people who live 80, 90, whatever, 100 years old, but a big portion of that is in a hospital bed. So it does not describe the quality of life. It just says the length of the lifespan. Now. The other side of that coin is what you call youthfulness, vitality. That is dependent on how much prana or life force is coming to your body, which is dependent on the spin of your chakras. So when your chakras are spinning very, very quickly, it's drawing a lot of energy, releasing a lot of unwanted energy. Make sense? So that determines your vitality and your youthfulness. You just you don't want just vitality and youthfulness because there are people who live very intense, very powerful, very vital lives and die at 30 or 31. I think Bruce Lee was 30 or 31, 32, somewhere there. What you want is both. And that's where spirituality and prana come together. So when you do your meditation and spiritual practice, the divine energy comes down, the spiritual self goes into the body. That's why the Atma in uh, Bhagavad Gita and the uh, Hindu scriptures, Lord uh, Krishna told Arjuna, he says, the Atma is immortal. It cannot be killed or destroyed. So when you do your meditation, that immortal aspect is using the body to keeping the body alive. And then when you do physical exercises, when you apply these teachings that you've learned to help others, 
guess what? That allows your chakras to pump more prana, so that helps you on the vitality aspect. So meditation, spiritual practice helps you in this longevity aspect, the exercise and the practical application of the teachings in doing service, generating good karma and everything else helps you with a vitality. The two together are two sides of the same coin. That's how you have heaven on earth. Are we getting somewhere? <laughs> okay. So I hope that helps. So that's why, you know, you know, when we share this information, it's not just for the sake of, you know, talking about some speech or concept. concept. I personally, this is just my belief. You don't have to believe. My teacher never told me this. It's just my opinion. Spiritual teachings with no applications is useless. That's my thought. That's why every time I learn something, I go, how can I use this? Because once I know how I can use it, then I can share it with you. I'm going to sit there and go, by the way, you know, the rotation of this planet goes at how many frequencies? And you go, that's nice. You know what goes through my mind? Who cares? But they go, you know, the rotation of planet causes, and because of that, there's a resonance effect. This chakra said, therefore, when I do this, I can use this to improve my life, improve my relationship, relation, improve my finance. Then I'm interested. So if you choose to continue studying with me, that is going to be the theme in everything I do. I mean, some of you say, yeah, you know, I don't agree. I don't care if you agree or not. Because it is very, very important for you to hear it make up your own mind, but at least you know where I'm coming from. And that's how my teacher trained me, practical or pragmatic spirituality. Okay, that's it. Anyway, I'll leave it up to you. If you want to do the meditation, doesn't cost you anything, my, but this is a part, my fault, I forgot. Uh, if you really want to make the most of it, uh, have a bucket of some sort with salt and water in it when you do the practice, okay? Because what happens is, during that meditation, or during that um, self-healing portion, we remove a lot of dirty energy, heavy energy, and some of you go, oh man, I can't believe I have that crap living in my system. Yeah, the purpose of salt water is to unload, right? Water absorbs, salt breaks it up. So you take a bucket like this, and put a handful of salt, and when you're done, dump it down the toilet, okay? Now, the interesting part, if you're Catholic, you know holy water is essentially water, salt, and the priest pair on top of it. And a lot of you go to the beach, what do you do? Oh, it's so good. You go into the water, you come out, you lay out in the sand, right, with the sun. You know what you're doing? You go in the water, that has cleansing, disintegrating effect. You lay down the sun, sand, you have solar energy, you have air energy, the fresh air, you have, have earth energy. So after you get cleaned up, you get energized with solar air and ground energy. No wonder you come out and go, yeah, let's do it again. It's cleansing and energizing, okay? But anyway, if you're gonna join that, you're gonna participate, make sure you have salt water because when we start pulling stuff out, some of you go, oh, <laughs> got it? Just a little thought. Now, one last thing and I promise we'll meditate. Another thing is this. If you can, take a salt water shower or salt water bath on a regular basis. We always teach this. I teach in the corporations, you know, about uh, stress relief and all that stuff. In addition to meditation, we teach them, take a salt water bath with lavender oil, okay? Lavender essential oil. Not a mixture of, you know, oil and perfume oil and whatever. Try to get the essential ones. Anyway, we have a bookstore. If you can find anywhere, just on the panicking.com and masterco.org website, there's a bookstore. We have oils. Now, it's something like this with oils. <clears throat> the question you should ask is, you know, you have doTERRA, you have Young's oil, you have El Cheapo oil, whatever. There's different oils. What is the essence behind it? It's as simple as this. Everything in the universe is different frequencies. These different frequencies have different properties. That's obvious, right? Now, for a person who could see energy, these properties are seen as colors. So lavender has two main colors. It's about, at least the regular ones, about 80% violet, 20% blue, at least the ones we observe. So that means the blue has a calming effect. The violet raises your vibration. And in the process of raising the vibration, the negative energy breaks down. Something that I'm oversimplifying. So when you put like 10, 15 drops in your bath, and you lay down there with, a, you know, you have salt, right? A handful of salt and lavender oil in the bath. The salt breaks things down, the, the blue calms you down, the violet raises your vibration. That's how you feel good when you come out. 
So you can use lavender. Another thing you can use is tea tree oil or sandalwood. Tea tree oil or sandalwood is um, their green energy. Green has cleansing effect, okay? And some of you eat sushi. You make soy sauce with wasabi, right? So the wasabi breaks down the, if you take raw fish, there's usually a, a thin layer of grayish energy. The wasabi, the green energy breaks it down. When you light sandalwood to clean your room or sage, it has a lot of green energy. So some people, instead of lavender, they put tea tree oil or sandalwood oil, you know, 10, 15 drops into their salt, into their bath, that has cleansing effect. Between sandalwood and, and um, what do they call this thing? Uh, tea tree oil, it depends on your budget. <laughs> sandalwood is like 10 times more expensive. Tea tree oil is a lot cheaper. So you decide which one you want. It depends on your budget, okay? Uh, and then last one is eucalyptus. You remember growing up? You know, if you're all stuffed up, you can't breathe, what happens? Mom would put drops of lavender oil, oh, not lavender, eucalyptus oil in your humidifier. Remember that? Because eucalyptus is orange energy. Orange is the color in nature that is cleansing but pushes things out. That's why when you go to the toilet, <laughs> pooping or peeing, your sex chakra or your basic produce a lot of orange to push either liquid or solid waste products out of your body. When a woman's in her period, the sex chakra produces a lot of orange to push the blood out. When you exercise, your aura produces a lot of orange to push the dirty energy out of your aura and your chakras. Make sense? So the color orange is expelling. Expelling is what you call forceful cleansing. So some people, um, they understand this. So when they put it, or maybe they don't, but it still works. They put it in the humidifier. So when you inhale that, um, that mist, with some orange particles, as it goes to your lungs, it breaks down the blockage and then it pushes things out. That's what you call an expectorant, okay? So when you put it in your salt water bath by itself, we get 10, 15 drops of it with the salt. When you lay down, the salt breaks things down and the orange pushes it out of your aura. That's why when you come out, you go, man, I feel good, all right? So anyway, it's not, I don't know why I'm talking about this stuff, but I hope it helps you, <laughs> okay? And the very last thing that I want to cover real fast when it comes to cleansing is this. Energy cords. Maybe one of these days we'll have a class on it or a discussion. Cords, you know, a piece of, you know, like a wire. So, you notice when you're around somebody who's very, not, I, let's put it in a positive way, not very positive. <laughs> they complain a lot. After talking to me, you feel heavy. There's an energy connection. So these cords can be dissolved many ways. One is cutting all right so some of you we do that in the emotional healing after you get rid of it we cut so these cords can be attached to people can be attached to thoughts and emotions that's why you notice when something's bothering you a lot if you just use a certain technique of cutting it you go i know about it but i don't think about it anymore cutting the cord there are many ways to do it um the easiest way is you just put your hand like this imagine you have a violet light around your hand violet and you think about whatever you want to get rid of, just say cut and disconnect. That's it. All right? Another way to do it is when you meditate, when you chant Om, which we're going to do now, the chanting with the intention will also disintegrate a lot of negative energy and partially cut the cords. Okay? That's it. I think, uh, man, I didn't think I was going to go this far. I'm just going to have a short discussion. I hope you got something out of it. All right? In future lessons, uh, meditation, I'll share more. Now, you came here to meditate, not to listen to me, yak, yak, yak. All right, let's do this. All right, tap your crown. Press center of your palms. Focus on your feet. Input, hands and feet output. We're going to chant Om. So when you chant Om, feel the divine energy flow through you. Okay, put your hand like this. Ready? As you chant, feel the divine energy come down, inside and out, and flush everything out. Go. Om. 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 Now just be still. Just imagine your body is completely hollow and just let the liquid light flow down through your body. Om. 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 
Maintain your stillness. Just listen to my voice. Negative chords, cut, 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 cut. Just be still, keep your hands where they are. Just let it keep pouring out. Put your hands down. Put your attention on your crown and your crown only. Gentle awareness on the top of your head, your crown. Listen and repeat silently. I am that. I am not the body, not the emotions, not the thoughts. I'm not even the mind. The body, the emotions, and the mind are just the instruments of the I am. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self, a being of pure energy and light. I am that. Allow your awareness to stay on your crown or just let it drift wherever it wants to higher and higher. Just listen. I'm not the body, not the emotion, not the thoughts. I am the soul. I'm a being of pure energy and light. I'm a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love and divine power. I am that. So. yourself to just drift higher and higher or just simply let go and let things happen you are that the soul the spiritual self you're connected in one to your higher self your higher soul you're connected in one to the divine spirit the divine spark in you you are one with God you are one with all there is only oneness We are one. Our hearts are one. Our souls are one. Our spirits are one. There is only oneness. I am that. So... Hum. 
means I am that. Affirm with full conviction, you are that. You are that being of light. A being of pure energy, of light, of love, and power. That's your true nature. Affirm it, own it. That is the real you. So... So hum so still be aware of who you really are maintain that awareness of the I am a being of pure energy light unconditioned love and goodwill be aware of it meditate on it and just simply let things be now. Let go. Be your true self.
let go. of your body, be aware of your hands and your feet, slowly and gently come back to your body, slowly and gently come back, slowly and gently open your eyes. How was your spiritual vacation? So you know what we did, right? And some people are like, what? <laughs> Better than drugs. <laughs> we don't need drugs. You know, spiritual drug is best. <laughs> no side effects, <laughs> right? And free, energy is free. So the mantra so hum means I am that. And you keep referring to yourself, I am that spiritual self, I am that. So the purpose of that is to temporarily Remove the influence of the body, the emotions, the thoughts, so you get to see who you really are. And some people go, man, I was so peaceful and so quiet. Oh, so blissful, so this, so that. Guess what? That's what the spiritual self experiences 24 hours a day. All we did was experience, look at me, a glimpse of it. So the longer you do your meditation, the more often you do your meditation, the longer you recognize who you really are, even when you come back to your everyday life, you're able to keep that stillness, that peace longer. So it becomes a solid pole of light in you to the extent that whatever is happening outside of you, you get to see it from that perspective. That is the value of true spiritual practice. Okay? You don't need like, you know, a thousand steps in meditation. The first and foremost, the most important is to remember and recognize who the I am is. And to just kind of wrap it up for you. The whole idea is you temporarily want to remove the influence of the body, the emotions, and the thoughts. Get to realize who the I really is. And then once you recognize it, then you come back and use your body, use your emotions, use your thoughts. That's what you call spiritual mastery. Now, you say, well, I've done it. The question is, how come I have to do it again? Because life happens. Right? As you go to that spiritual practice, then you go back to your life, you have control, you know, you do this, you do that, and then things happen, and you temporarily lose control here and there, at some point it builds up again. So you have to go back into that practice and meditation, go back to your center. Remember, you keep saying, oh, i got to center myself. What does that mean? I don't know, maybe so I don't go anywhere. Center means you're going back to your spiritual center, the spiritual self, you are the center of your circumference, and act from that perspective. The reason that we lose control is because we lose our center. In other words, we forget that we are the center of our universe, the spiritual self. So you get dragged down in whatever else is happening. So when you center yourself, that comes with what? Spiritual practice.
right? I hope that helps some of you. Uh, it definitely is one of the deepest lessons my teacher taught me, and you know, I do my best to share what I can without overwhelming you too much. I know some of you are overwhelmed, but that's the way I like it. <laughs> because if I give you just a little bit, maybe you don't get the impact. Because, but if you give it way too much than you can handle, hopefully something sticks. <laughs> All right? So anyway, tonight, uh, about six, no, seven hours and 10 minutes from now, we're doing our evening meditation. So if you can handle this <laughs> talk tonight, we'll cover a little more and then we'll do more meditation to bless our family, loved ones, uh, you know, whatever's happening in the pandemic, the fires, there's always gonna be something happening outside, right? The key is to go back to your center and then from there, we can be utilized as instrument to perform spiritual work, all right? So other than that, uh, I think that's it. Oh, some of you are asking, <laughs> I'll share it with you. This is one of the things we came up with. It's a purification spray. We use this for cutting cords. Okay, so anyway, it's in the bookstore. So yeah, somebody asked about it, so I'll just mention it. Um, okay, that's it. And namaste everyone, you all take care. And we will see you tonight about seven hours something later. Okay, oh, by the way, after we're done, we did deep meditation. You have to get up, do exercises, so that the energy can penetrate deep into your system. Okay, namaste everyone. Oh, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tohok Sri Mahaguji Mailing, to the Lord Christ, to the Lord Buddha, and all the high beings. Thank you for divine light, love, mercy, compassion. Thank you for blessing us with a loving heart, an intelligent mind, and an unstoppable will that we can serve others. We thank you in full faith. So it is. Alrighty. See you night. Take care. I turn this off. <laughs>